Hey, what's up everyone? I wanna show you how to set up your Streamlabs event list from nerdordie.com. Now I'm gonna show you with the Nova overlay pack here, but I wanna let you know, this process is actually gonna work the exact same way for all of our packs. So as long as you're following these instructions, you should be good to go no matter what you're using. So once you have it downloaded and unzipped, you just need to go into the Streamlabs folder and find the event list link and just double click that and it'll begin the import process. Once this is loaded up, you can actually choose which widget theme to bring it into or even create a new one. But I have one called demo that I'm just gonna import into and it's gonna bring in the event list. Now, if you don't see this working fine, don't worry too much. You can always just try re-importing one more time. And sometimes the animation doesn't look 100% right. That's okay, it's gonna work inside of OBS Studio or Streamlabs OBS. Sometimes there's just some little problems when importing into Streamlabs and this little preview area. So don't worry too much on that. Now, once it's added in and imported in though, we do need to add it into OBS Studio and Streamlabs OBS. So let's do that really quick and then we'll talk about customizing things. For OBS Studio, all that we need to do is go over here to the widget URL, click copy, and then we'll hit add and add in a browser source. And we'll add in the URL right there. And then for Streamlabs OBS, just go ahead and open that up. Click the plus here and find the event list widget and then click add source. Don't worry if this doesn't show the proper one and we'll hit add source again and it'll be added in. So once it actually loads in, you might not see anything and let's go back to OBS Studio. If you don't see anything, don't worry. That just means you probably don't have any event history. And the other thing that can be happening is that you might not have them all enabled here. Just double check that you have the proper ones enabled that you want to use. A quick tip though, is that in your recent events section under the filter area, if you don't see some of them coming in, you might need to add these in here as well. So just keep that in mind. Let's go back to the all widgets event list option here. And we can talk about testing, which is actually extremely easy to do. All you need to do is spam these buttons to make sure that they're coming through. And in Streamlabs OBS, I can make sure it's happening as well. So with everything added in, all we need to do now is just test things out, make sure it's working. So I'll just spam this button here a bit. And then in Streamlabs OBS as well, we can send through a couple of tests here and it's already kind of going. If you need to, you can just go back into OBS Studio and refresh the cache of the page to kind of get it back as you had it before. And then the same thing with Streamlabs OBS, you can actually just show or hide it and then show it and it'll reset it as well. One other cool thing about Streamlabs OBS is that you can actually go into here and back into your event list widget options you can click test in here, but I have found that sometimes it does break the event list just a bit, even though in the actual preview of it, it's working fine. So just keep that in mind. There are some little things here and there that might not look properly. That doesn't mean it's not working properly when you're actually streaming. So now that we have everything installed and tested, what we can do now is customize it a bit. And in OBS Studio, we are gonna have to do this in the streamlabs.com website. In Streamlabs OBS, you can actually do it within the event list kind of widget here, but I don't like doing it in this because it's not kind of global. It just is easier for me to have it on the side here and then testing it here. It's just a personal preference, so it's really up to you. And since I like to use OBS Studio sometimes anyways, I'll just do it in here all the time because it, it actually works for both. It will change the options here as well. So anyways, let's get right into customizing. You can see you have all of your global options, which will normally work just fine. Things like having the minimum amounts, the max events, those will usually work. The background color, I wouldn't worry about too much because we don't really code that in, but things like the text color probably won't work either, uh, depending on what you're actually using. So if I change this to a red and just hit save settings here, you'll see it kind of flash, but none of the text actually changed to this bright of a red. That's because we have it saved down here in the custom fields which we'll talk about here in a second. Now, again, the same thing is sometimes we do take advantage of this font option just to reduce the amount of options, but for a more advanced event list, we like to code in all the options within the custom field. So if you're changing the font and it's not working, the answer is it's probably in the custom fields. This is gonna be same for the font size, the animation, the animation speed as well, just to kind of keep everything for the customization in the same area. 
But finally, the fade time will actually work and it will actually hide the widget for the amount of seconds that you set up here. So if you set it to like two seconds and click save, you'll see here that after it actually saves and refreshes, it will fade out after two seconds, or you can just set it to zero so that it doesn't fade out at all. That will work with all the event lists. Another thing is we like to always include the flip X and Y options. So if I actually do that for both of them here and hit save settings, you'll see that it kind of shifted here to the bottom right. And then rather than animating from top down, it actually animates from down to up. So that's something we like to build into all of them so that you have the option to kind of put it wherever you like. So I'm just going to leave that on and move on to the custom fields. And honestly, this is where a lot of the real magic happens. So I do want to really point out that this is going to be different for all of our packs. The custom fields are custom to each pack. For this Nova pack here, it's not going to be the same as something like the Focus pack. Um, so keep that in mind and we'll actually show you one other pack later. Now, a lot of our packs do have the option to have a vertical event list or even a horizontal one that you can change around. You'll see things like event height a lot of the times to allow you to make them taller or shorter if you need. And things like the username font size are here and the tag font size. Usually the username is this one where it's the actual name and then the tag will be like hosts and then the number of hosts, etc. So keep that in mind that usually we try to build that in so that you can increase the font size and not have it blurry by scaling it up or something like that. Another big thing we like to do is add in as many color options as we possibly can. So you can see them all here in these color pickers where you can actually enter in a custom hex code. So let's change this diagonal lines to yellow. And once I actually save that and hit test up here, you'll see that the diagonal lines that come in at the start are actually this yellow color. Uh, that's something we try to do as much as we can, give you as many color options as you possibly can have so that you can match with your branding or something like that. And again, this one has just a bunch of different options. Like you can disable the blinking lights that are happening. You can change the color of the username. You can change the font size here uh, for the actual weight, uh, which is the boldness. So what I recommend is that you go through all of these options and just mess around with them, kind of get a feel for what they're doing. And if you run into any problems and you're like, oh man, that doesn't look too good. You can just re-import and start over from the default and just mess around and find something that works for your stream. Sometimes we even include things like image uploads or even sometimes video uploads. In this example, we have a sprite sheet that has the icons here. So if you wanted to go in and adjust the icon colors in something like Photoshop or something like that, you could do so. And then you could have a super customized event list as well. Now I did talk about scaling as well. So let me just reset this transform really quickly so that you can see what's going on here. When we actually scale this up, I'm just going to make it really big here, the full width. Now this isn't included in all of them. You can see though, what's happening is this thing just got massive. And we do that for ones that are purely coded so that you can go in and scale things up and keep a complete lossless experience for your event list. So I'm going to hit test here a couple of times and you'll see that it doesn't get blurry. It's completely crisp. Depending on the actual one you're using, it might be included in there. And it's something we're trying to do, especially with our newer ones. So we're going to have videos that actually cover all the individual packs and event lists so that you can see what's going on for them, but they're not going to be out for just a bit. Uh, make sure to follow us on social media so you can see when those are happening or get in our discord as well. But before we end this video, let me just quickly install the focus event list really fast so that you can kind of see the difference of what's going on. So I'm going to go back to my desktop and just go through the install process one more time very quick. And that should kind of let you know how easy it is just to kind of swap things around. Now that this is added in, I can open up OBS Studio here and we'll see it working just fine. We can even go into Streamlabs OBS and see the th same thing. We can just test things as we need and increase the size if we really want to. But again, we'll check out the custom fields here and these will actually be completely different for this pack. Have things like where the animation comes from, the uppercase or non uppercase and different sliders for different positions. We try to keep the options somewhat consistent between each pack, but sometimes they're just a completely different design that requires different options. A couple of quick tips before we move on. If you're using something like XSplit, 
All you need to do is add a browser source as well, or maybe just some sort of web source and just paste in the URL from the widget URL here and you'll be good to go. Before I forget though, I wanna say, if you do see something like clipping occurring where maybe the event list goes beyond this red bounding box. So let's say this just happened to be set down here to 400 by 200. You'll see that the event list just doesn't look right. All you need to do is go into your browser source and you can do that in Streamlabs OBS as well when you go into it up here. You can just increase the size. So generally I like to go pretty big, uh, especially for the height. I like to give a lot of extra room for any of the animations that we have built into it. So for example, if we're testing this out and it kind of goes down a little bit, we don't want it to get cropped out at the end of the animation. It'll look kind of just weird. We usually try our best to make a nice kind of clean exit animation for each event. Okay, so that concludes the end of our event list setup video here for Streamlabs. If you guys have any questions, make sure to reach out to us. But like I said, we're going to try to release more videos on the overview of each pack so you get an idea of what's happening inside of each one, what options are available and what aren't. And we'll actually have those available to the public so that you can even see those before you download the pack and get an idea of if you can make exactly what you want. So I hope this video helped. And thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.